G'day, Scotty Tucker from Clearwater Lakes and Ponds here today talking to you about the Matala BioSteps 10 biological filter for ponds. This is a great filter uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, it's really good for koi ponds, mainly because koi, which are the big large Japanese carp, produce a lot of waste and when you get a, a pond pump that's able to pass solid waste and pick it up and put it into the filter, you need a filter that's not going to clog and that, that it's going to be uh, low in maintenance. And that's exactly what the Matala filter does, the BioSlips 10. It uses the patented Matala filtration media and it has it in different coarsenesses or grades. So you'll see that the green one is uh, relatively coarse, then it goes through into the blue, which is a little less coarse, and then it goes into the grey, which is the finest of all, which is great for, uh, for biological filtration. What happens with other pond pumps on the market? There's a lot of pond pumps on the market that use uh, foam. And what happens with foam is that the foam clogs quite quickly. So foam has got a good surface area when it starts, but as a pond ages and matures and as you get more and more build up, the foam starts clogging. And what happens is that you have this, uh, what starts off as an enormous surface area, but then as the, uh, as the clogging effect happens, you get what's called a channeling effect. So the water passes through and around and takes its easiest path. So a lot of the surface area doesn't actually get used. With the Matala media, it's got a very, very, very good combination of open cell so that it allows the, uh, the larger particles to get stuck on here while still allowing the smaller um, particles and the water to pass through. And then because the filter is designed progressively, what's big enough to get stuck on this green uh, mat first will then uh, st stay there and then the smaller stuff will go through into the blue and then progressively less into the green. So the really fine stuff that clogs uh, foam will actually pass through and not cause anywhere near as much clogging on the Matala filter. What that means for you, much less maintenance. Rarely do you have to take these out and clean them. When you do clean them, it's a case of pulling them out of the filter media and you can literally just bang them on the ground and uh, shake them around. You can potentially get a hose if you're not having uh, chlorinated tap water. If you do have chlorinated tap water, you're better off not hosing them out. Uh, use that if you've got tank water. Uh, or if you do decide still to hose them out, because they're in different layers, you can potentially just take out one or two of them, give them a hose off with the tap, put those back in, and then maybe a couple of weeks later or a month later, take out some more and just hose them off uh, as you go along. Now, the filter itself is, uh, is quite unique in terms of the, uh, the options that you have with it. You can have just the filter itself, uh, just as a, as a standalone biological and mechanical filter. You can also have the unit with a UV. In this case, you can see the UV we've got put into the lid, so it's a nice, neat, fitting UV light. What a UV light is just basically guarantees that the water won't turn green. So the single-celled microscopic algae that turns pond water green, uh, as it passes through the UV, that algae gets destroyed and the dead algae gets left in the filter. Now, it's also somewhat unique in the uh, options that you have in terms of outlets. You can see in this instance, we've got the optional waterfall uh, outlet, which turns the filter in a nice, into a nice, attractive display. You can literally just have that sitting at the edge of the pond with the water spilling out over the waterfall. You could potentially put some rocks around that and hide it, some plants in front of it. You could put it poking out through a, a section of blue board and have this behind the structure. So it's, it's quite a unique, uh, unique little setup. The other way that you can have the outlet is that on the outlet this itself that you can see in here, this little uh, fitting that's popping out, a 40 mil PVC pipe will just go straight into there and it's a very tight, snug fit. So you can use a 40 mil outlet. But what I prefer to do if you're using uh, a PVC pipe outlet like that is to actually use one of these fittings, which is just a stock standard uh, rubber coupling and with a hose clamp, and you can connect that to the outlet of the, uh, of the filter there, and it means that you can use 50 mil pipe. Now we've got black pipe here, you can use the standard PVC white pipe, which are very easy to source locally. You're not having to pay for any special pipe fittings like you do with some other brand manufacturers. Uh, and you can get this stuff easily and, uh, and cost effectively in your, uh, your local hardware store. So the outlets are quite good. Uh, now we'll just talk about the actual filter box itself. 
again, some of the uh, other manufacturers use a really weak plastic uh, in terms of the case and it does uh, get soft in the sun and it becomes malleable and it moves and over time you get a bowing in the box and uh, in really bad situations you can actually get some water seeping out because the box just uh, gives out. The Matala box is a very, very strong, uh, strong structure. It has underneath the unit itself, under here, there are little cross ribbings as well which gives it additional strength underneath the, the box itself, which helps with the bowing. That's going to be an edit. You've got this UV on, mate. Okay, when we lift the lid off and have a look inside the box, you can see, as I say, with the UV in place here, the water comes in through the UV, goes down to the bottom. Now, if the UV wasn't there, the water would simply just come in and, and go down the bottom. It's going to hit that green media first, which is the coarse one. So the big particles are going to get stuck on the green one or ultimately hit the bottom. Now, on the inside of the box, the bottom is actually tapered down so that the water leads down to this little sludge drain down the bottom. So you can open up that sludge drain, let that go in out into your garden. You can have a hose on there running it through so that it's nice and neat. Uh, so it's, it's again, low maintenance. You're not after having to, to uh, physically remove all of that stuff. It'll easily just drain out. Now, if we come back to the box for a minute, you'll see here the progressive nature of it. it goes from the green to the blue and then a couple of layers of gray. And you'll see here these little channels in between. So what happens here is that the water flows in through there, flows through the green filter media, and as that gets blocked over time, in order to make sure that the filter doesn't overflow and have problems, the water level would rise up over there and then drop down through that gap and then start going through the filter media again. So it doesn't completely bypass everything if one's blocked, that would get blocked first and then it would just bypass that one. Then if that one got blocked, it would bypass that one. And if for whatever reason over what would have to be years, because you really have to clean this out, but if, uh, if this did completely block up, the water would just pass over the top and go straight out through the outlet. There's also space in here in this final chamber where you can put any sort of additives that you want to put in. Uh, you might put in some, uh, some crushed coral or things like that to um, uh, to help with the hardness or you might put in some water additives if you want to in there as well. So it's a, a, a very, very good cost effective filter for ponds up to about 5,000 litres with or without koi. Uh, very good in um, larger ponds as well if you want to run it in a larger pond or if your fish breed and get larger or you're feeding more than what you were, you can literally just stand two of these side by side and make them modular so that you effectively double your filtration. Now, the, the other thing when it comes to these filters, the pressurised garden filters, which are like little garbage bin uh, structures are quite popular nowadays. Uh, and there's situations where you have to use those, but when you can use what's called a gravity fed filter such as this, you are better off to use it rather than a pressurised filter because with pressurised filters, uh, with filtration in general, biological filtration, the bacteria that's ultimately doing the job needs a lot of oxygen in order to, to do the job well and thrive. Now in a pressurised system, there's no gas exchange between the air and the water, so the bacteria has to extract the oxygen from the water. Now with these systems, there is a gas exchange, even when the lid is on, you're getting an exchange between air and water, which means that there's much more oxygen available in this box for the bacteria which means that they do a much better, much more efficient job. Uh, one other final thing when it comes to the Matala filter media, and yeah, these ones are cut to size to suit this, but we do these in sheets as well if you do want to make your own biofilters. But from a microscopic level, so not only have got this enormous surface area here, uh, from a microscopic level, it's, it's also quite well textured. So the bacteria that, uh, that lives in here has got a really high surface area, which means you get a hell of a lot of bacteria living on this. There's been some copy products of this stuff over the years come out. It doesn't have that sort of same technology. Uh, it's very flimsy, it falls apart. The, the uh, genuine Matala is quite strong and sturdy while still being somewhat flexible. So it's a really, really good media, really easy to clean. 
The Biosteps 10 filter, great value filter for smaller sort of koi ponds.